following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Run Gibor. The, the Donum Day is a gift of God. It is the fire of God. It is the Gibor, the gift born or the gibur, the gift burn. The Donum Day is really the gift of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> when we uh, investigate the Rune Gibor, we find different shapes and different religions, different philosophies, but especially, of course, the Nordic alphabet. The Rungibor usually is formed by an X or by the other rune that is called Eguas, we, we, that we spoke in the previous lecture. Cut by the rune Is, that is also called Isa, which is a vertical line. Also, the rune uh, Gibor is formed by the rune Sikh, which is similar to the Aiguas or Aiguas, also cut by a vertical line in order to make the Gibor. All of these symbols enclose the meaning and the deep significance of the rune Gibor, which of course in the, the Greek alphabet you find the letter T or Ki, which is an X, with which the Greeks write the first letter of the name Christ. If you uh, examine the symbols of uh, the Orthodox religion, you find that the main symbol for Christ is an X cut in the middle by the letter R, which in the Greek alphabet looks like a P a Latin P. 
So with that, they form the first letters of Christ. Chi and, and, and the other R. I don't remember the name in Greek. <coughs> Ro. Yeah, the Ro. And that is very common. But also it's very significant and profound that the letter Ki or the X of the Greeks is also symbolized by another cross on top of it, which is really another uh, Gibor, which is a symbol that we see next to these uh, letters of the Nordic alphabet. The X, which has on top the other cross, which is a common cross, is forming the octagon, as you can see, that has eight points of forming the eighth pointed star. So the octagon is usually used in the Greek Orthodox Church for the baptismal font. It has always the shape of uh, an octagon. That of course shows us the two uh, cross. Also this uh, symbol is uh, found in the flag of England. And also just a simple X or a simple cross in the flag, in the flag of Greece. Both countries are uh, worshiping St. George. St. George, of course, is a patron saint of England and of Greece. And if you inquire why, especially in England, Gibor, of course, according to the runic alphabet, is the letter G. The letter G of Gnosis. The letter G of Glorian. Because we have that sign in our website, which is the cross, circle, and circle it, or inside the circle. So, if you examine then, this octagon is two crosses. In other words, Two G's, which form the word George, because the two G's are in the word George. Now this George comes from Georgios, Georgios in Greek, which means Geo or Je, Je, the Earth, G E Gaia, Gaia, the Earth. In Orgios, work or worker. So when you read Gorgios in Greece or Georgios, it means a worker of the field, a farmer, which is profoundly significant because this is precisely what the rune Gibor entices or encloses. The symbol of the cross. The horizontal uh, line and the vertical line is a symbol of the Sephira Malkut, which is at the very bottom of the tree of life. This symbol is feminine, because we always have stated that Malkut is feminine. And above it is Yesod which is masculine. So this is, we will say, the two polarities of the cross. So if we place the X on Yesod and the other cross in Malkut, we have Yesod Malkut together, which means the man and the woman. Two crosses, which bring us into our memory two saints 
or two apostles of the Lord. The first is Peter. Peter related with the first cross, which is on top of it. And the second is Andrew, which is crucified in the cross of X in X. Beautiful symbols that always are hidden, different meanings that only those that meditate and enter into the esotericism of the war of God can discover. So you see here how the chi or key of the Greeks plus the cross and different runes that we are studying here are hidden the gift of God. Because this is what Gibor means. Gift. But it is of course related with other meanings. As Gibor, gift born. Which means that the cross, the Gibor, hides. The secret of to be born again. Which is a gift of the Holy Spirit. As you remember, the Master Samael on the Or, talking about the rune Gibor, states the electric force is a cross in movement or the swastika. It is a continuous movement, the transcendental electricity which, is, which spins around like a vortex. It has served me in order to form the Gnostic movement. The cross in the profane and the profaner, profaners is not a swastika because the movement ends once they conclude the chemical copulation with the orgasm. Into between parentheses. On the contrary, in the Gnostic cross, the movement does not end because the electricity itself is transmuted continuously. The normal duration of a sexual work must be a minimum of one hour. In India, the degree of culture is measured according to the time span that the chemical copulation is endured. Whosoever endures three hours is respected and is a lord. The swastika in movement generates the transcendental sexual electricity from the revolution of the dialectic. So, of course, that's why this is called the Gnostic movement. Because we use the swastika, which is the gibor. But let us study what the book of Revelation states. And the fifth angel sounded. And I saw a star fall from heaven onto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was at, at the torment of a scorpion, when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Great chapter, verses from the book of Revelation, chapter 9, 1 to 6. Which, of course, one wonders, who is the fifth angel? 
we were uh, stating in different lectures that is Samael, and which is precisely in the Aztec calendar, which is called Tonatiu, the very center of the calendar, that has as a tongue a dagger and shines like the strength of the sun. On top of that uh, face of the center of the Aztec calendar, you find a horn, a thorn, that symbolizes that he commands the fifth horn, because he's in, in, it's, in his, up in his head. There are seven horns, according to the book of Revelation, that the lamb has on his head. The fifth horn is on top of the fifth son, which is Tonatiu. And of course, that is showing us what the fifth angel is doing in this day and age through the Gnostic doctrine. Remember that says, and I saw the fifth angel on it, and the fifth angel sounded. When you see the center of the Aztec calendar, you see the open mouth of Tonatiu, breathing, in order to sound any instrument, in this case a trumpet, you need the breath. Of course, the trumpet is a symbol of, of, of the sound, of the, of the doctrine, of the truth that is coming from the mouth of Tonatiu, or the fifth angel, who is Samael. And the angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven. Many times, <coughs> in many lectures, we stated that Kabbalistically, the head is the heaven. So when we talk about heaven, we have to talk about the throat and the head up. In order to understand. What do we have in the head? We have the pineal gland, the pituitary gland, the brain, and all the forces, archetypes, that the physical body has inside, and all of us have. But when we talk about this star falling from heaven, we uh, read That in other, I mean, in other, in other verses, it is stated that to this star is given the key of the bot bottomless pit. Now imagine a key. Right. The star is coming from your face down to your body. And is given a key. What is a key? In your head, in your face. When you study the science of breathing, then you discover that the force of the breath that comes from your face down to the abyss which in this case is the Sephira Yesod, because that is the bottomless abyss, or the Sephira Yesod, which relates to the sexual force. When we investigate uh, the Christian esotericism, we discover that Jesus, talking to Peter, says, Peter, you shall be called stone, and unto thee I will give the keys of heaven. 
And whosoever is, I mean, if you open in heaven, whosoever opens with those keys in heaven, she will enter in heaven. But if you close that with your keys, she will close to him in heaven. Those keys are related with heaven and hell. When we study Peter, we discover that Peter is in relation with faith, related with a pineal gland. Studying in the endocrinology, you find that the pineal gland is related with the sexual glands. So the hormones of the sexual glands contribute with the development of the pineal gland and vice versa. But Peter is in the pineal gland. And uh, Peter is crucified upside down, if you remember. With this, is telling us that the signs of breath or the breathing signs should go down to Yesod. So the keys of Peter are, of course, the keys of the two polarities, which are, which are called the gold and the silver, or those two conducts that we find in the spinal column, which are called Ida and Pingala, the two witnesses. Remember that occult anatomy states that the nostrils are connected to the testicles and to the ovaries by these two cords, which, between parentheses, relate to the cross of Peter and to the two keys that Peter has in his hand. Because the clue in order to transmute the sexual energy is in the science of breathing. When you learn how to breathe, then you transmute the sexual energy. <coughs> Especially when you are in a sexual act, it is very uh, clear that when the couple are in a sexual act and they are not controlling the breathing system, the breath is agitated. And when they reach the orgasm, the type of breathing is, of course, increasing and increasing. So here, the rune gibor which is the science, of, the science of Peter, is telling us that the clue or the keys in order to transmute the sexual force is precisely in the science of breathing. This is precisely what we have to understand. That's why in the center of the Aztec calendar you see the face with an open mouth and that ornament underneath the nose, which is telling the secret that in order to turn the Nawi Olin, which is the crossing movement, in order to turn it, like the Master says, that the Shrastika serve him in order to form the Gnostic movement. But that mystery is precisely in the size of breathing, because without the air, nothing can turn around. And the same is our own energy. Peter is telling us, when crucified upside down, that we have to utilize the breathing science, or the science of breathing, in order to transmute. The fire that comes from the bottomless pit, with the angel, the fifth angel, is precisely opening the mystery. He's teaching the science of Peter. And this is precisely the great significance. Now, Listen carefully because we are teaching about the Nordic alphabet. <coughs> there are two runes related to the Nordic alphabet that form the rune Gibor. First, the rune R, 
which is a rune related with the man or with a woman that works with the solar light because R backwards is Ra. And this is something that you have to understand. It's not a, uh, the, we didn't say it's the man. I'm not talking about the ordinary and common human being there that doesn't do this. Because the master states that the swastika is a Gnostic cross in movement. The ordinary people, when they do the cross, the sexual cross, they just fornicate. They don't put uh, the cross in movement. But the other part, if you see, there is another rune, which is called Kaum, which is a vertical line with one arm up, or two arms, but in this case, one. I want to show you one, because this is what is called heaven. The rune means heaven. I line up in the sense of, uh, you remember Hitler, when they said, hell, Hitler, and they just raised the arm like that. They were performing that rune, just called Kaum. It's a feminine rune related with a priestess wife. Many say it's the woman. No, it's not the woman. It's the priestess wife, which is the woman that knows about transmutation. So if you unite the Kaum with the R, And then you make the rune Gibor. The priestess united with the man that knows to work with the solar light. This is how you see it. This is R, an open leg, and this is Kaum. The arm above, like the hell of the, of the Nazis, which between parentheses, they knew about all these runes. I mean, Hitler knew about it and all the secret organization. I don't think that all the soldiers and all the German people knew about it. Right? But it's obvious that he was using those. If you observe the last speech of Hitler in YouTube or in any other part, you will see how in that speech, He's using the rune Dagas, the rune Kaum, the rune Sikh, the rune Egwas, and, and for his own uh, benefit. While the people only do the Kaum. When they salute him, Hail Hitler! He was receiving the energy, the force, and he was just taking it also with his extended hand and then breaking it in order to make the Eguas with his body. One hand, the left hand, was in the, his waist with a breaking, of course, because he put his hand in the waist, holding it with a thumb. He's making a breaking elbow, arm, bent. or bent, yeah, <laughs> right? A bent elbow, yeah, no, broken, he's, uh, he was right. <laughs> he's a bent. A bent elbow. And uh, the other hand, when he was breaking it, or I mean, bending it like this, making it, I mean, the other part of the aguas, which is the rune of the word. You remember the last lecture. I told you, aguas is like a o arms. Hmm? The M is there, which is the W upside down. Hmm. So the A O was the A was rune is the same Yewams John, the word. And in that speech, he is using the word and with a lot of strength, but he's taking the force from his people. That every time that they say hail and raise their arm, they are bringing the energy from heaven to the earth. And this is precisely the mystery of the Gibor. One arm is up to heaven and the leg is to earth. What are you seeing there? Two rooms as well called Kaum. 
because the rune kaum, which is a vertical line with uh, the arm extended up to heaven, is also represented in this way. Two lines forming, of course, an angle, an open angle, like the angle that you see on top of the head of Tonatiu in the Aztec calendar. Two lines opened, and of course, the, the rune is on top of the head. But Gaung is like that, which means the rune of heaven. The rune that opens heaven is a feminine rune related with the priestess wife and also with the sword of the magician. So we hold here the similitude and all how is everything hidden within this mysterious Gibor rune. For instance, among the Nordic alphabet, there is a rune that is called Perth. The rune P E R T H Perth, which is also called Perthro or Pertra, which reminds us Peter, the stone, Petra. That rune is made with a vertical line and two kauns. One kaun up to heaven and the other down to earth. One down and the other up. This is how you form the, the, the famous rune Perth which is the rune of Peter. And you said, what is th this symbolizes? The vertical line symbolizes the spinal column, which is related with the, sci the science of breeding, where you find it in Pingala, because Peter has the keys of heaven. And that's why the first kaun is open to heaven. But the second is open to hell, to the earth. Both runes are feminine. The first kaun relates to your throat, which is feminine. And the second, which is in the bottom, relates to the sexual organs, which are also feminine. Because the mystery of this rune is that takes and gives takes and gives. So in order to take and give, you have to spin the gibor. When you spin the gibor, you see then four kaun in each angle or in each open angle of the rune. Do you get it? So, the, the rune Gibor is the mystery of the feminine force with the masculine, which is precisely the science of Peter, the apostle, that has the two keys. Because one key that is gold is man, and the other key that is silver is a woman. Ida Pingala. Because Peter, in the pineal gland, which is faith, develops with a transmutation of the feminine forces. You find in certain uh, apocrypha gospels that Peter always talks against women or is enraged against Mary. Well, Mary, the mother of Jesus, in Hebrew is written with two mems. You said Miriam, 
Miriam. That's the name in Hebrew of Mary. Now, the word Miriam is Maim, water. With the only difference that has the R in between the word Maim in order to form Miriam. It is showing us the Resh, the letter Resh in Kabbalah, which is the head. Which is the head. Which is Aries. And in the head, in the pineal gland, we have Peter. Who is the one that controls the science of breathing? Because he has the keys to open heaven. And let me tell you, the pineal gland is the door to heaven. When the chakra sahasrara, the pineal gland, is opened, then the soul can enter into heaven. But the one that opens that door is Peter. Do you understand that? It's not Peter that lived 2,000 years ago. It's your own particular Peter, which is in your pineal gland. But for that, he has to control the head. And in the head, you have the first mem of Miriam. Because the Resh is telling us that that mother of Jesus is here in Da'at. Which is the first open Ka'un. Which is feminine, in the throat. Of the rune Perth. Which is the P of Peter. The stone. Well, in the stone of the Aztec calendar, the whole stone is Peter. That's why all the monuments of uh, Aztecs and Mayans were made in stone. Because the whole secret of every stone is Peter. Is Gibor, the alchemy. That's why the god of life among the Aztecs has the swastika in the forehead and if you read that it says that the locust come out of the pit and hurt to hurt the men that do not have the seal of God in their forehead which is the swastika because the energy the sexual energy has to rise and that sexual energy is the other kaum, which goes to the earth, which means that Mary from the earth. There is our physicality. Remember that in the Christian gospel, you find many Marys. Mary, the, ma the, the mother of Jesus. Mary, the mother of some of the apostles of Jesus. Mary Magdalene. The three Marys is a, is a mystery that we talked previously. But now let us talk about Mary Magdalene. Who is Mary Magdalene? It's your physicality. That's Mary Magdalene. Your matter. Your sinful matter. That has to learn how to be holy. Whether you are a woman or whether you are a man. That's Mary Magdalene. And how do you do it? Through the keys of Peter. Because Mary Magdalene is a state that was a prostitute. But what is a prostitute? A body that is a prostitute, a physical body, is a body that fornicates. That adulterates. That commits fornication. That squanders the sexual energy. That doesn't know how to utilize the gibor. And that's why Peter says, this woman always intervened with our discussion. And every time, it's what it says the piece of Sophia, every time that we want to give a solution to our repentance of the book of Peace of Sophia, Mary intervenes. Well, Mary relates also to the ease, the sick. The serpent that Moses put on top by the commands of Jehovah. 
that serpent that we're healing the Israelites in the wilderness. That was, was also Mary, Miriam. So in other words, the science of Peter is related to two feminine aspects. The science of breeding that obviously relates also to the sign of speaking the word. Because without the air, I cannot utter any word. And also relates to the sexual force, which is also feminine. Now you understand why Peter always blames the women. But he's not talking about the physical feminine aspect of any woman. He's talking about the sexual organ or the throat, which relates to the tree of good and evil. In other words, to acquire chastity, we have to know how to use the throat, which we were talking in, in different lectures, and how to use the sexual force. And that's why when you know how to use the throat, which is feminine, and you utter the right mantras in the sexual act, and if you transmute with the signs of Peter, which are the two keys, how to elevate the sexual force with the vocalization of the mantra, then two feminine forces are working together with Peter. Two Marys, in other words. That's why Peter and Mary are related in any repentance. Because the Master says, any repentance is 100% sexual. If you want to repent, you have to know how to use the sexual force. And in order to know how to use the sexual force, you need the science of Peter. And that's why Peter was crucified upside down. Like telling us, use your head, use your will, your faith, your breathing power in order to transmute the sexual force, which is Mary, the feminine force of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is an atom that we have in the pineal gland. Now, listen carefully. There is another apostle that was crucified who was the brother of Peter whose name was Andrew the one that was crucified in the cross in X in the Gibor Andrew the brother of Peter Andrew symbolizes fortitude strength but not physical strength sexual strength Andrew is related with the kidneys. Above the kidneys, we have the suprarenal glands. The suprarenal glands are related according to Taoism. And anyone that studied Taoism knows that the strength of the kidneys are related with the testicles and ovaries, with the sexual strength in both sexes. But that is a masculine power. Why? Simple. Very easy to know. Andrew comes from the Greek andros, which means man, male power. So female and male have the man power in the kidneys. The kidneys connected to the testicles, each kidney crossing to the testicles, are showing us the crossing of the two forces, sulfur and mercury. Sulfur is a fire, mercury is a semen that we have in our sexual glands. So that cross, the gibor, is 
making the cross between the testicles or ovaries and the kidneys. Better say the suprarenal glands. If you want to, to have strength in your sexual act, you need the power of Andrew. And that's why Andrew is crucified in the cross of an X, and that's why Peter is crucified upside down. But both of them relate to the feminine forces. Because if you see the cross of St. Andrew has four kaums in each angle. So you see, it's showing the feminine and masculine forces of the two apostles. Now, how do you call this cross in an X that we are talking about here, that is the force? <coughs> in Chinese, you call it Qi, Qi, or Qi. Qi, which is also romanized as Qi in Chinese or Qi in Japanese, is a fundamental concept of traditional Asian culture. Qi is believed to be part of everything that exists as in life, force, life force, or spiritual energy. It is most often translated as energy flow, or literally as air or breath. You see this quotation? This is very clear. The character itself is a representation of steam or breath rising from rice. When I say this, rising comes into my mind again in order not to miss it, Miriam in Hebrew. What Miriam means in Hebrew means rising, lifting. That's the meaning of the word Miriam or Mary in Hebrew. And behold here how everything is connected. This was apparently seen as a release of energy from the rice when this concept was first developed. To clarify, the character for rice is shown to the right. The ki or chi, ki character, is still used in compound words to mean steam or vapor. This character is precisely the cross of Peter plus the other cross or the key, an X, with the exception that I have gaps. Hmm? It that means rice. Well, let me tell you one thing. In Asia, the symbol of the sperm, whether the, the sperm of the man or the ovum of the woman, is symbolized with rice. In the Middle East, with wheat. And here in America, with corn. Both corn, rice, or wheat is a symbol, of course, of chi, energy. It means that that energy that is rising from the rice, the seed, is a sexual seed. That is the real chi, or chi, of tai chi. When you see, for instance, any dance or exercise of Tai Chi, if you carefully observe the movements of the dancer that is doing Tai Chi, is, of course, manipulating the Chi, the energy, with fins, body, and hands. That is a Tai Chi. It's not a vulgar movement. Like between parentheses, when the master was alive in Mexico, I asked him, Master, what do you think about karate and kung fu? And he looked at me and said, that is vulgarity. What you have to learn is Tai Chi. The way in which you manipulate and the way in which you control the energy. You have to feel the energy. When you do the runes, you have to feel the energy. When you do Tai Chi, you have to, you have to, to use the energy. And remember this carefully. 
because this is what is called Martian arts or martial arts related with the four of Mars. Now in Kabbalah, it is something very important. Chi, the energy that is a creeping thing that is in your whole body, is related with the locusts. When you observe that little animal or insect, the locust or the cricket, you see how this animal is associated with the chi, with the energy, and with the consciousness. Because when you are performing the runes or the tai chi, you have to remember yourself in order to manipulate the energy of the gibor. In Mexico, for instance, there is a, a hill that is called Chapultepec, or the hill of the Chapulin, which means the hill of the cricket. Now it comes into my mind also this uh, uh, tale of Walt Disney, Pinocchio, in which the consciousness of Pinocchio is a cricket. This is not taken just by accident. The cricket, the locust, is related with the principle or a force, life force of Mars, of Gebura. We will say it, that the first ray of Mars is called Elohim Gibor. Do you remember that uh, conjurations? By Samael Sabaoth, and in the name of Elohim Gibor, get the hands Andramelech. Everybody repeats that conjuration. Who is Andramelech? Andra below, Melech, king of the underworld. That's why Andramelech is placing Malkut. Because Malkut is a physical body. Whether you work for Andra Melek, the king of the underworld, or by Elohim Gibor, the positive ray of Mars. So Elohim Gibor is the one that turns the swastika clockwise. But all of those black magicians from the underworld turn the swastika counterclockwise. One, they go down into the evolution, and the others go up to heaven. It depends how you turn the swastika. Remember that the wheel, the gibor, related to the counterclockwise rotation, is related with the wheel of zamzara. In the left, descent tifond, devolving, and in the right is evolving anubis. But there is the wheel of samsara that turns mechanically. Hitler was using that counterclockwise in the opposite way, unfortunately. But here, with Gnosticism, we have to learn how to rotate the gibor clockwise. Because if we do it clockwise, then we receive the seal of God in our forehead like the gods of the Aztec pantheon, and in our hands, which of course is the form of the gibor. For instance, when you want to defend yourself against the negative forces, Matthew Samael says, point with the left to the earth, and with the right, bend, and make an elbow. So with the hand, you are, you are pointing heaven. And that is the gibor. And after that, you bend your left knee on the ground. And the other, you just bend it. That makes the sign of the swastika. 
to defend yourself against the negative forces. It's what the Master Samael taught in Mexico. But all of these runic movements have no meaning or are worthless if we fornicate. You can learn all these movements of the Gibor, but if you don't transmute, you will have no chi. And that chi is precisely the igneous principles of Gebura. Do you see the, the name there? Begins with G. Gebura. Gibor. And that's why the Master Samael gives the secret of Gibor or the crossing movement, which is the way in which you put an activity, that creeping thing, which is the energy in your flesh and in your sexual organ. Remember that Genesis states that in the sixth day, God created. All the creatures from the earth. Remember that the earth is a physicality. He created in the sixth day behemoth in the solar plex. He created haya, which is translated as beasts, but it means life. Created life, haya, behemoth, and also it stays there. That creeping thing, that creepeth. Well, that creepeth thing is precisely the particles of Gebura, which are called locusts or crickets. Part of the consciousness that comes into your body. When you practice Tai Chi, you have to learn how to feel that creepeth thing that is in your flesh, that is in your hands, that is in your head, that is in your feet, in your legs, and you move until you feel the energy. And you combine that with breathing, the science of breath. You get that? So that's precisely why the fifth angel is related with locusts. People, when they think locusts, they don't realize the mystery of that. They only think about insects. But they don't know that in Kabbalah is as the, the meaning, the hidden meaning of, of, of the life energy. For instance, how do you call the life energy of Chesed, which is in the other side of Geburah? You call it fish. So when you talk about fish, because fish is, is Chesed, because Chesed is water. But Geburah is fire that goes to the earth. So when you feel the fire in your physicality, in the sexual act, you feel it in all your body, especially in the sexual organ, which is a sense of touch. That is the force of Samael. That is a creeping thing that he called locusts, that the ordinary men don't know how to use. And they create Kamaduro and Karmazaya, a karma that endures five months that they want to die psychologically, and they cannot because that karma is related with non-negotiable karma, kamaduro or karma zaya. But when you know, when you are transmuting, then you are controlling. That's why it is stated that the locusts hurt only those people that do not have the seal of God in their forehead. Meaning that they are not transmuting the sexual energy. They are not sublimating the sexual energy to the head. They are not utilizing the keys of Peter in order to be born again. Because Gibor means gift of born with the cross. But also is Gibur, which means the gift of burning yourself in your psychological defects. You know, you have to know how to utilize that. Every time that you want to annihilate an ego, you have to utilize the cross. The cross of Peter and the cross of Andrew. Which is the, the, the fortitude. The two crosses there, which form the baptismal cross or the baptismal font, 
and great orthodox. Did you know that a newborn baby go there and he is baptized in order to receive the strength of the Holy Spirit? But the Holy Spirit is masculine in the pineal gland. It's Shiva. And is feminine in the sexual organ. And in the pineal gland is faith. Faith. Masculine faith. But there in the sexual organs is femininus. Feminine. You know the word? Fe is faith in Latin. Faith. The less faith or the organ that has no strength like the pineal gland. That's called the feminine. The less faith. And that is Mary Magdalene. That you have to teach your sexual organ how to transmute in order to develop more faith. Because that energy, that chi, when it rises to the pineal gland, develops your faith. Because open the doors of heaven, which are in the hands of Peter. So this is how you find the relationship of the apostles of Jesus with this science, or the transmutatory science. Which is the Gibor. There is something significant that you have to learn the Master Samael says Peter Patar with his radical letters knows very well that the key of repentance is in sex. The three radical letters of Peter Patar PTR only the power of the Spirit can comprehend the words of the intimate Christ. It is necessary to receive the Donum Dei in order to comprehend the science of the great work. The true repentance has its foundation in the sexual mysteries. Peter is the one that has to express the idea of repentance in the midst of his brethren. The brethren of Peter are the autonomous and self-cognizant parts of our own individual being archetypes that we have but Peter is in the pineal gland together with the atom of the Holy Spirit the Sahasrara chakra ready with Keter the crown so that's what Peter is the first without Peter we cannot be born again because he gave us the signs of breath of breath of the breathing science and only to know how to transmute because we have the two keys the two polarities and also Andrew with his cross in X. But here, look. We have here this God which is called Sochipili. He is an attitude of meditation, looking up to heaven and doing this mudra. The finger, uh, the index finger, to touching the thumbs. You might think, oh, that is a mudra from India. No. This is also from Mexico. It's touching index and thumb together. And it's a position of meditation, which is called the Padmasana. Uh, Padmasana. But of course, you see that the knees are a little bit up, lifted up. Why? Because he is showing us the two bones. You remember the, the, the sign of danger, the two bones with a skull? Well, imagine that the face of Sochipili is the skull, and the two bones in cross are the two legs that are making the gibor. That's called Sochipili. Prince flower, flower, or child flower is also named. If you study that, you will understand why in the Aztec calendar you find twenty days. 
when you study the Aztec calendar, the circle immediately after Tonatiu, which is the Gibor that turns, has 20 squares. The 20th is called Sochelto, which means flower. The 20th. Kabbalistically, 20 is resurrection. So what is this sign telling us after the rotation of the Gibor in the center of the Aztec calendar? It's telling us that we have to reach resurrection in the fire and resurrection in the light. That's why it is stated in the Peace of Sophia in the beginning of the book that when the Master Jesus appeared to them, the apostles, is after his resurrection, after his ascension. He says, 11 years after his resurrection. When you study that, if you are esotericist, you know that Jesus appeared to the apostles after resurrecting from the fire and resurrecting in the light, which are related to the seven radicals, the seven initiations that all of us have to develop. And that's why that arrow, which is the horn on top of the head of Tonatiu, is pointing to the 20 Resurrection, but also, also pointing to the number one, which is a crocodile, the first. To those ones that do not succeed, they turn not in the 20, but in the 21. You see, 21, the other rotation, the 21 is precisely the fool. Who is the fool? The one that does not disintegrate the ego. That is the fool. After reaching the resurrection in the fire and the resurrection of the light. In other words, after reaching the first mountain. Because we are talking here about the revolution of the sun, which is on a two. The sun is Christ. It's a force of Christ that is giving that impulse in order for us to be born again and to receive the resurrection in the fire and the resurrection in the light. Now, related to this 21 and 20, is something significant that the Master Samael gave in a lecture related with the times of the end. He said, You will see what will happen between, you see, 1982 and 1992. The first 1982 makes addition of 20. The second one is 1992, which is the addition of 21. In between is 10, the wheel of Zamzara or the wheel of the Aztec calendar. This is a very Kabbalistic statement. People that do not understand what a master of Kabbalah teaches, they think, oh, the master was talking about the year 92, 1982 and 1992. No, he was not talking about that. He says, you will see what is in between those years. What is in between those years? Well, this is the horn of Tonatiu that is pointing up to the other mystery which is here, at the very top of the Aztec calendar, you find the date 13 Cain in the Aztec calendar. You see? 13 Cain. If you count the little dots which make, makes a day, are 13 dots. In the middle of a symbol which means the Cain. That's Cain. It's similar to, to, to the symbol Sochil, but it's not. It's a Cain. Cain is a spinal column. 
meaning the work with the wheel, the spinal column, all the signs of the transmutatory signs, is relation with death. That is in between. Those that go up in order to practice and to experience the 13 repentances of Pistis Sophia. Where is these 13 repentances of Pistis Sophia? Are the 13 eons, because the 13 eon is Ain, the top of the Aztec calendar. But you cannot experience the 13 repentances without previously reaching resurrection, which is precisely what the arrow is pointing. If you don't reach resurrection, and we don't know the ego, then you go to the 21, which is the fool. So what is between 1982 and 1992? Is the secret of the work of the annihilation of the ego, which is related with Peter, because Peter is a science, science of the transmutatory breeding of the head in order to control the sexual glands, which is Mary, the word, which is also the breathing force of Mary, the throat, the feminine organ. And the outcome is, of course, to go beyond good and evil. You see the two serpents that descend from the 13 Arcanum, which is the very top. In the left descend the Kundartiwador, and in the right descends the Kundalini. This means that you will descend to annihilate the ego, whether in the right, whether in the left. All depends how you turn the Gibor, the science of the cross of Peter and Andrew. If you don't annihilate your ego willingly, and then, of course, 21 begins to the left, and you descend to the involution or devolution in which the earth will annihilate your ego in hell. But if you decide to do it willingly, and then you go to the right, right? You see clearly here how the clockwise of the Gibor goes clockwise to the right. But if you turn the Gibor counterclockwise, and then you go to the left with Tifon to hell. And that is in between. The symbol of those years that the Master Samael states in between. Why? Because all his doctrine was given at the time when he was given that lecture. And he was seeing. He says, I only see a harvest of Hannah's Musen. Meaning, initiates that were going to the left. 21, the fool. Who is the chief of the Hanas Muzen? It's called Andromelech. The negative ray of Mars. That do not know, those that do not know how to handle the locusts. Or that light force of Gebura, light force of Mars. That all of us have in our bodies. That we have to learn. Now you know why the angel of the abyss that controlled those locusts, his name is Apollo, which is the sun. Apollyon, which means destroyer, destroyer of the ego. Whether you destroy the ego with the forces of Apollo or Apollyon in hell by devolving or by utilizing the force of the Kundalini, the right serpent in the right side. That's why you find how the cross of St. Andrew and Peter are precisely pointing at eight 
Kaums or pointings, you know, in the Aztec calendar. If you observe, there, is, there are four forming the cross of Peter and the other cross of St. Andrew behind. And each, at the end of each pointing, is a kaum. You see in the graphic. You think that that was just uh, place that just by accident? No. Remember that the initial has to receive the eight Venustic initiations. The eight Venustic initiations is the way in which Tonatiu develops and the number eight, the radicals, eight radicals of the fire and the radicals of the, of the light. And nobody can go up and is not working previously in the number eight, which is related with the Rungi Bor, with the Chi. Now you understand why this Chi that is related to the locusts, to the crickets, to the consciousness of Gebura, because Gebura is a spiritual soul, spiritual consciousness. You understand why? John the Baptist was eating locusts and wild honey. When you read the Gospels and you understand that the initiation of John the Baptist is the Venustic initiation. Is that part of the Bodhisattva that is working himself. But the Gospel states that he was eating locusts. I mean, John the Baptist was a master. But people imagine John the Baptist because it is symbolically stated that he was wearing a camel skin and living in the wilderness and eating locust and wild honey. Like a, like a wild person, like from the caves, you know. Living in the wilderness and chasing locusts in order to eat and trying to find wild honey in trees in order to feed himself. And because he didn't have money, he was using a camel skin. Everything is symbolic. The camel, symbol of karma, that we have to carry in our, in our hunchback. That everybody carries in. That's the symbol of that skin. Why you have to live in a desert of our life. E e eating, eating locusts or crickets doesn't mean that he was really eating the locusts. I mean, imagine that he was only eating crickets. It is ridiculous, <laughs> right? It means the life force of Gebura, the Chi. Because the life of Gebura, the Chi is in Scorpio, in the bottomless pit. The forces of, of, of the sun, Apollo also, which is the symbol of wild honey. Because... The bee transmute the solar light into honey. We have to do the same thing. We have to transmute the solar light into honey. That is transmutation. That is alchemy. Eating locust means that. That he was utilizing the forces of Samael, the locust, in the right way. But since this science of Peter was delivered to humanity, what is going on right now? The locusts are going everywhere, which is the fire of principal forces, life force of Samael, of Geburah. Everywhere. Everybody is receiving the doctrine. The question is, are you eating locusts or are the locusts eating you? Hmm? Because it is written that the locusts were like scorpions. A scorpio is a sign of sex. And is ruled by Samael. And that the commandment given to the locusts was, do not hurt any man that have the seal of God in their forehead. Only those fornicators that are not utilizing the life force of Geburah in the right way. But those that are following the path will feel, they say, 
the necessity of annihilating lust. The annihilating or those psychological defects of lust. But death will free from them. Because the lakas will torment them five months. Five is karma. Meaning that fornication is in relation with kamaduro and karmazaya. Only those that work very hard with the lands of St. George, working with the earth, with the Glorian, with the Gnosis, with the three factors of the revolution of the consciousness. Because the science of Andrew, which is the man, Andros, in Greek, is the three factors. The first, first factor is the gibor, the gift of born, to be born again by utilizing that cross. The second factor, the gift burn, the gibor, the science of annihilating the ego and experiencing those tortures that Andrew experienced on the cross in X. But there is another meaning for gibor. From that gibor, we find the word give. We have to be generous. Generosity. Do you inquire about the meaning of that word? Come from genes. When you give from your own genes, you are generating dharma. And that's why we always insist. The third factor. If you don't give, you don't receive. That's the law of the gibor. The rotating cross. You give, you receive. You give, you receive. But if you only receive and don't give, you are greedy. You see there, again, the G. Greed is precisely those that want or give you more knowledge. I want more, but you don't give. That's why in the, in the website we put donation. Because I want you to develop. But we don't want to force you. Because there is a lot of organizations, philosophers in the schools that are asking for donations and making parties with it. We ask for donations in order to print books. In order to have the website. In order for you to develop. But if you are tied to your pocket and you don't give, how are you going to receive? The gibor, the crossing movement, is mathematical. And this is how we experience. Why I receive in this, you see? For instance, the meaning of the, of the rune Perth. I was investigating the rune Perth of Peter. No information, it's secret. Well, I sit down, I said, God, give me the secret of the rune Perth, and I will give it to the public tomorrow, if you allow me. Then I sit down and I fall asleep meditating. It was a cricket whispering into my ear the meaning of Perth. The cricket is my consciousness united with my God and with Samael, the fifth archangel. And why? Whispering because the meaning of the word rune means to whisper. Rune means secret. Rune means mystery. And that mystery is given by God. Because between the graphic, the symbol, and the word is a whisper. Like Elias waiting for the answer. And then I receive the signs of Peter. It is signs of breathing. Because he is the two nostrils, the two keys. The ida pingala in order to transmute the sexual force. Who is his science of the two keys? Without the breeding science, you cannot work with the two keys of Peter. And Peter is in your pineal gland. Peter is your faith and your willpower. 
And his brother is Andrew that works in Acts 2. That gives you the strength, the sexual strength. But you have to control Mary. Because remember that Peter don't like weak women. Only strong warrior women. Like Mary Magdalene that repents. And gives the solution to their repentance. In pieces of fear. There is no repentance where Mary and Peter are not present. And all his brethren, which are all the glands, all the forces, which are in your Malkut, which is the first cross. And in your Yesod, which is the cross and X, which is your Chi, your sexual force, your locusts, your fish, if you want to, from Chesed. And all of that is hidden, you see. And the mystery of Gibor. And that's why I admire and I enjoy looking at Tai Chi. Because they are manipulating the Chi, the force of the body, marvelously. But the clue is also to control the Chi of the sexual energy. Because if you, know, you don't go to the center, to the bottomless pit, which is your sexual force, you are wasting your time. If you are doing the runes, but you are not practicing death, transmutation, you are wasting your time. Three factors. And the three factors relate to the gibor, gibor, to give and to receive. That's why it says uh, the meaning of the uh, rune gibor, gebo, gift. The gift of God. And God, my friends, begins with G. There you have. Now you understand why two kaums, one above forming the compass and the other forming up to heaven the square or the half a square of the masons, have a G in the middle. Geometry. This is how matter is done with geometry with the gibor as the marvelous mystery of this rune that we have to inquire the more you go then you acquire what Sochipili is a prince of the flowers because he worked with the gibor but that is, of course, in the very bottom. It's, it's showing the gibor in the sex, you see. If you go directly in the, in the two, uh, two legs that are forming his legs, you go directly into his sexual organs. He's controlling his sexual organs, his feminine, that faith which is minus, minini, small, or meat. As we say in Hebrew, sexual force. And that's why Sochipili was venerated. Because when he is in meditation, he's not sleeping, or like other people do, just put their mudra, finger and thumb together, they cross in Padmasana, and they start closing your eyes, and they go <laughs> snoring. That's why his eyes are open to heaven. Meaning that he is spinning the gibor hmm? in meditation. Because the gibor, the chi energy, has to be active in meditation. Your body is passive. Your mind is quiet. Your emotions are also quiet. But the consciousness, the chi, the locusts are liberated. Because we want to make of that man of, made of wood a man made of flesh. You remember that the Aztec says, the gods create, created man out of wood. What wood? The wood of the Aiguas, the tree of good and evil, the yu tree. That's the meaning. And after creating them, they fuse them with divinity. But in order to fuse that man with divinity, 
you had to practice the meditation at the style of Sochipili, meaning dying in yourself. Because this is what the Gibor also states, is death. Death, birth, and sacrifice for humanity. And in that level, you walk away, ahead. Remember, the 13 eons are experienced in the second mountain, not in the first. In the first, you experience certain levels of the Sephiroth, but the 13 repentances that the Master Samael on the Orthodox in Pisces Sophia is an experience of Jesus together with the Apostles. And Jesus is Savior. And in order to incarnate Jesus, you have to fifth, reach the fifth initiation. Because the one that talks about the repentances is Jesus. From the center of the tree of life, which is Tifereth, which is the Aztec calendar. And from there, Jesus talks to the apostles, which are around working with him as archetypes. Remember that when Jesus resurrected and ascended to heaven, what happened to the apostles? They were together with Mary. There were no other woman there, only Mary. And Matthias, or, that was taking the vases of Judas, Iscariot. There were 12 apostles and Mary. And they experienced the Pentecost. After after the resurrection in the fire and in the light. And this is how they received. That power is from heaven, but through initiations. It doesn't mean that you, can, you, you, that you should not uh, practice meditation. You should practice meditation. Annihilation of the ego. But in order to, write, to reach to the very root of your ego, to the causal aspect of the ego, Matthew Samael states, only Jesus can do it together with Tifereth. So you have to incarnate the word to advance a lot. But in order to reach completely death, you have to incarnate the Lord, Yeshua, the Savior. And for that, you have to be born again. You have to work with the three factors of the revolution of the consciousness. That's the mystery of Gibor, Gibur, Gebo, Gift. Generosity, the three factors of the revolution of the consciousness. <coughs> Let me show you the other graphics. Practice that the Master Samael gives. In the book, The Doom Aryan Race, which is a Christmas message, he states, after you, as Sochipili, concentrate and meditate in any ego that you want to annihilate, any defect, any error, then you have to make the rune sikh. The rune sikh is easily to make. First, you sit down, you say, first, kneel down. Second, sit on your heels in the Muslim style. Third, extend your arms to form the horizontal beam of a cross. You see there? In that position is hidden the gibor. The extended arms is a cross with the body. But the body seated in the Muslim style is the Sikh, which is the rune of the Divine Mother. In that position, pray to your Divine Mother and bend your torso forward, then backwards while keeping your arms extended and while remaining firmly seated 
on your heels. After having comprehended this or that psychological defect, in all and each one of the subconscious levels of the mind, we must pray for help to our particular Divine Mother. Thus, we beg her to eliminate from the lunar bodies the I, the entity which personifies such a defect. Without the help of our Divine Mother, it is impossible, impossible to eliminate the demonic eyes. That, that live within the lunar bodies. Previous comprehension of any psychological defect is indispensable before our Divine Mother proceeds to eliminate the submerged entity that personifies that I. Remember that when the Master says comprehended in each and every one of the 49 levels of the mind, it doesn't mean that you have to comprehend in that moment. It means if you comprehend your defect in the first level of the mind, very well, now annihilate it. Another aggregate in the second after many days, and likewise in the process until you reach the 49. Because when people read this, they, they understand that they have to comprehend the ego in that very moment in the 49 levels. And that is impossible. Because in order to comprehend the 49, you have to be awakened in the other levels. So first, eliminate of your first level, which is the intellect. And when you catch another ego in other levels, comprehend them and annihilate them. And in that position is how you ask to your Divine Mother. Sit it on your heels. Stand your arms on cross. Bend your torso like the Muslims down. But remember that the Muslims, they don't put the arms in cross. Here we are putting in cross in order to make the movement of the Gibor related with the Divine Mother. Because the cross that we are doing with the extended arms is the Gibor. And the Sikh, which we are forming with the body, is the rune of the Divine Mother. When you do that, pronounce the mantras, Sulu Sihi Sikh, Sulu Sihi Sikh, which is the name of the Divine Mother in the runic alphabet. Concentrate in her, Sulu Sihi Sikh, my Divine Mother, my Goddess, please. Annihilate this defect from me, from my psyche. Destroy it with the movement of this cross that I'm doing. And then you bend back and forth, back and forth. You see? Gibor is movement. Remember that. Sulu, sihi, sih. Moving backwards and forwards. Backwards and forwards. Without moving your butt. From your heels. Just the dorsal. Don't lift your butt. That no, doesn't work like that. That's the position precisely of this uh, practice that the Master Samael teaches in the Du Marian race. If you don't have the book, you can read it there. He explained it there very clear. And it's in relation with the runes. That's the way in order to activate your Divine Mother, Sulu Sikh, in order to annihilate your ego. Previously comprehended in any of the 49 uh, levels of the mind. This is how you advance. That this is the practice of the Gibor. First to be born again, and for that you have to practice sexual magic with the signs of Peter. Then the, uh, this uh, practice that we are uh, teaching you, meditation at the style of Sochipili, in which you are activating the Gibor in order to comprehend yourself, your Chi, and finally doing that practice of the annihilation of the ego, which is Giburn, because you burn your ego 
with that exercise. But you have to first to transmute your sexual energy. And third, be generous. Don't be selfish because the selfish doesn't advance in this path. That's why every initiate was always given and given and given the gibor, the gift of God, until God will give you the donum day. Because the donum day is a fire of the Holy Spirit that develops in different levels in accordance with your work in your level of being. Can I ask you questions? Questions, yeah. You mean the fire should be directed to the person that is doing it? Will God or your, this, the masters also direct you towards the person that, will, that you're going to be born again after that you will be practicing the sexual magic with? You mean that your couple that you should find in order to practice sexual magic? Yes. If your God will guide you to, towards yes. him? Yes. Yes, of course. God, which is the G of Gibor, knows that you need uh, a man in order to practice the, the rune Gibor. If you are patient, you will find that man that will help you to put in activity the cross, the swastika. And then from that, you will advance. That is for, for everybody. But sometimes... Uh, we are impatient and we get married with somebody that is not going to work uh, or give us that help completely. Because there are different uh, uh, marriages in relation with karma and dharma. But if you uh, are serious in yourself, if you practice, for instance, death with the rune gibor in this, the way that we are teaching here, and generosity, sacrifice for humanity, then God will give you that gift. Because remember that to receive, we are receiving a lot. This physical body, believe me, receives a lot of forces from heaven. Unfortunately, there are people that when discover this, they utilize this in order to do evil. Look, for instance, the sample of Hitler. In the beginning, he was working good. But after that, all that force that he was accumulating with the Gibur, he was using it in order to burn, not his defects, but other people. That's really bad. This is, you have to use it for yourself, right? And that's precisely the path of the Hanas Muzen. Sacrifice for humanity is generosity. But do not fall into the mistake that some Gnostics do. They go to other groups and pull those people into their group. And they think that that is sacrifice. That is called stealing. It's not sacrifice. Sacrifice when you teach for the first time to the, to the people. The doctrine. That is sacrifice. And if the people like an estate, good. If they live, good too. Because we have to respect the free will. You see? That rotates the gibor. Everybody wants to go to the left. Well, go to the left. You want to go to the right? Come here. And we will teach you how to turn the gibor in the right way, clockwise. Do you have another question? Is there a relationship between uh, the spinning swastika and the spinning movement of the dervishes that we do in the Tibetan rites? The question is, if there is any relation with the Tibetan exercises that we do uh, in the turning of the swastika, of course, there is relation. Because every turning uh, aspect of any practice is related with Gibor. Of course, the top of the spinning of that energy is in the sexual act, which the secret is no movement with movement. You get that? No movement but with movement because you are moving the energy but if you don't know how to control the movement stop movement in order for that cross to continue his movement 
But if you are identified with your beast, with your animal, and then the movement continues and falls into the orgasm, and then you lose the chi. And then the locust comes against you. And you don't receive the seal of God, but the seal of the devil, which are the horns. Yes? The question is, Gibraltar, how is that related to Gibur? Well, it is related. Uh, Matthew Samuel explains that Gibraltar is Gibur or Gibor Altar. The altar, of course, is a R and a, uh, uh, the rune. The, I can't call it Kaum, the room Kaum. It is singular, you see, for instance. What is an altar? Simple, look. R is the man, the solar man that is practicing the transmutation. That is R, the son of the sun. And Kaum is the priesthood wife. United together are the Arcanum. Or the Arcaum, the secret Arcanum, sexual magic. That's the altar of God. There is other altar which are related with the work of the, uh, how you call the rituals, masses, and all religions. That altar is also related with Peter, the force of the heart. That's the altar, your heart, that you had to place in the sexual act in order for the swastika to turn clockwise for your own benefit. In order for the now we are lean in the center of the Aztec calendar to turn to your advantage in order to go up to the 20th day which is such a dull resurrection, and go after that, the resurrection of the fire and the light, into 13 Cain, which is the symbol of the serpent, 13, the way in which the Divine Mother destroyed the ego. Yes? Was the actual rock of Gibraltar used for rituals? Well, Gibraltar was used in order to teach what we are teaching here to the initiates. That was the secret. But in order to receive in ancient times, you needed to awake your consciousness first. Now we are giving all of these secrets publicly. Very difficultly. Because they are symbols that you had to study. That's why it is necessary for you to have all the letters, the runic letters, and see all the symbols of the runic letters. Why sometimes are in this way and another way? Those runic letters are also in the Aztec pantheon, not only in the European pantheon. What question do you have there? How are we correctly correctly to circulate the chi? Correctly to circulate the chi when we work with the three factors. When we work as a how and in which way we direct the chi correctly. How are we to breathe correctly? Oh, to breathe, to breathe correctly. Well, you have to learn how to breathe. That is necessary. The control of the breath is indispensable because that's the key of Peter in order to control the sexual transmutation. And you know that when you learn pranayama, you learn. But in the sexual act is the moment in which you have to increase that breathing aspect. If you want Peter to open the doors of heaven, the pina gland for you, but you have to control your Mary Magdalene, which is your body. And your body also is accustomed to fornicate. So, of course, you have to apply a lot of time in order to teach your body how to breathe. Because usually, the way in which the physical body breathes is backwards. 
Instead of Hamza, the body is doing Saham backwards, meaning fornicating. So we have to learn to teach in Hamza in order to be from outside to inside, from the periphery to the center of your Gibor. So practice a lot of pranayama. Any pranayama helps in order for your body to learn how to manipulate the chi. Do the runes, because the runes also assist you in order to transmute the chi, the energy. And one of the dances of martial arts are precisely the Tai Chi, which if you learn it very well, it will help you a lot to manipulate the chi, the energy, with the breathing exercise. That takes time, time and a half of a time. Do you have another question? Yes? Towards the beginning of the lecture, you made a connection between the fifth angel of the book of Revelation, the Antitonitio, in the, in the center of the Aztec calendar. Uh, how did you establish that link? Um, I wasn't able to... How do we establish that Tonatiu is a fifth? Yes, yes. Well, yes. it's established precisely in the very Aztec calendar because the days of the Aztec calendar are... Uh, pointed with circles, small circles. And in the very center of the Aztec calendar, you find four circles. Four circles. Each one above the pass of Tornatiu. One, two, three, four. Those four is called Nawi. Four. And Olin means to turn. Right? It means also pointing to the four other sons that were in the past before him, right? The four elements, the four root races before our fifth root race. And also relates to the four Gospels. Gospel of Matthew, Gospel of Mark, Gospel of Luke, Gospel of John. Those are the four Gospels. Or the bodies that we had to control, the four bodies of sin. In the middle is turned at you, the fifth. Hmm? Because we are in the fifth root race. So Tonatiu, of course, that is why it's called the son of movement. Because this symbol that is here is in relation with one of the symbols around the 20 days that are around him. And the one of the days is precisely called Olin, which is, means to turn, to go. Right? And this is precisely what the fifth son does, to turn with the four forces of the elements, water, air, earth, and fire, to turn. It turns into the Nauiolin. The center is the Akasha force, the sexual force. And you see, for instance, Samael, the horn here above the head of Tornatiu is Aries. Aries is ruled by Samael, which is the fifth mighty ray of the seven horns. So this horn is the fifth horn because it belongs to the fifth sun. And Samael also ruled Scorpio, which is the sexual force. Yeah? Aries and Scorpio. You see there? That's why to Samael was given the keys of the bottomless pit because he is the fifth Apollo, the fifth sun. Apollyon. Tifereth, because when Samael unites with Tifereth, which is the center of the tree of life, behold Tonatiu, working. Right? And these are all the mystery of the center of the Aztec calendar, which was made, of course, by masters, which knew about the runes, because we can continue talking here, there's a lot of mysteries there. Eight kaums around the sun, it forces. And you find that in Greece and Middle East. So, so, I mean, this is the mystery of Tonatiu, the fifth son, whose name is Samael in Hebrew. Olin. Is 
It is important to close the nostrils while you're doing hamsa. Alternatively, Alternatively no, hamsa, no. no. This is only for ton sa ham, ton raham, which is the Egyptian pranayama. When you use hamsa, you just transmute without touching your nostrils. There are many types of pranayama. But any pranayama helps. Because remember that the face in the center of the Aztec calendar is giving us the clue. The nose is letter with the breathing force. The mouth with the word. You pronounce ton, sa, ham, ton, raham, or ham, or ham, sa, whatever mantra, is uttered with the word. And that's the mystery. And the nose, the ears, and all that, if you study and you meditate in that, believe me, the cricket will tell you a lot. Yes? What book do I recommend in order to start in relation with this lecture? Well, study the book of runes by the Master Samael, The Magic of the Runes. That will be related with the Master explains about the, the runes. I extend it here about the Gibor, right? Because the Master gives only synthesis. But when you meditate in it, then you discover a lot of mysteries. That, uh, I mean, that's why we are the missionaries of Samael on the earth, because we have the duty of explaining that extend extensively. And uh, that's why we demand that all of you study the runes, at least the signs, the, the letters, the Hebrew also. But this is more profound because he's the very root of Hebrew. The Hebrew letter related with the Gibor is the Gimel, the letter Gimel. But we are not going to talk about that because we already talked about that. You can go into the website and you will find the mystery of Gimel, which is Gibor. No other question? Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah, Lord,